Before I simulated any further past game number two, I wanted to turn the trade frequency slider down because they did add that to this year's uh, franchise mode, and I'm very thankful that they did because in last year's game, a big problem was the amount of trades that happened. Um, the trade logic was really broken in last year's game, and it kind of ruined the uh, franchise to a certain extent. I know very early on in the series, I was periodically saving the game like almost every week and just sort of trying to monitor the trades that happened and prevent some of the really stupid ones because it kind of ruins the realism aspect that I don't, I don't like absolutely like whore it out over. Uh, you know, realism in a series like this, but you know, to a certain extent, I want to keep it relatively realistic. So you saw there, Scott Schebler went down with a, a torn thumb ligament. He's going to be out for a uh, one to two months. So I went out and made a couple free agent signings there. I picked up Chris Denorfia because we needed some added depth in the outfield with Schebler out. Uh, Everett Cabrera because you know Zach Cozart is our starting shortstop at the moment, and he is just not a very good Major League Baseball player to be quite frank. So I wanted to sign Cabrera, give him a shot at the everyday job. I gave him a two-year contract. I really only wanted him for one year, but he was demanding too. Still, I thought at the very least he's only making 2.7 million dollars so so it's not like it's an egregiously bad contract even if he does perform you know kind of poorly but on top of that we also signed alan webster who used to be one of my favorite prospects in baseball when he was with the red sox i thought he was going to be so good i actually went to his major league debut against the kansas city royals and uh i thought i mean he wasn't great that night but i just i thought his sinker and his slider were going to be so good he's going to be able to get both lefties and righties out but boy was i wrong he kind of flamed out uh, just never was able to locate and always seemed kind of like a head case too I don't remember if it was uh, 2013 and 2014 but one game he got shelled in Seattle and I just remember specifically the camera panning to him and he just had this absolute look of like I have no idea what I'm doing out here deer in the headlights completely shocked and it was uh, dubbed the Alan Webster face but anyway getting into the gameplay here so uh, Everett Cabrera actually had a really nice first at bat he uh, worked the full count there probably seven or eight pitches and then got on base uh, unfortunately Billy Hamilton did a line into the double play there so Homer Bailey on the mound he is returning from the DL. Uh, this is his first start back. Of course, he is coming back from Tommy John surgery. So a big recovery, but he is finally back after uh, more than a year gone from the game. Induces the 5-4-3 double play there. And then Ryan Braun up next. He goes down on the slider. So Bailey with his first strikeout back from Tommy John surgery. Now it's Chris Carter up to lead things off in the bottom of the second. He goes down by way of the slider as well. Now one, two, count two batters later to Aaron Hill. And he's also going to go down on the breaking ball. I think that was actually the knuckle curve drop. A third strike throw to first in time so Bailey with uh, three strikeouts already now it is Everett Cabrera up once again working the full counts here and he makes solid contact but gets bad with the lighting out right to Scooter Jeanette at second next batter is Billy Hamilton and he goes down to the dirty changeup right there from Taylor Jung or Youngman is it Jungman or Young I think it's Taylor Youngman I'm not 100% sure, though, to be honest. Now, Vada ripping one to a deep right center field. This one is back, and it's going to be grabbed just in front of the wall by Ramon Flores. Vado certainly made good contact there, but got a little bit unlucky. And Flores with a very impressive catch. Now, Suarez runs into one here. Deep center field, and Flores is not going to be able to get to that one because it is gone. A Eugenio Suarez with the solo moonshot to put the Reds up one to nothing. They get on the board first this afternoon in this Sunday finale over this three-game set here in Milwaukee. The rubber match, of course, now it's Kirk Newenheis up. He grounds this one into the hole, but a good ranging play by Everett Cabrera makes the throw in time, and he records the out right there. Next batter is Aaron Hill, the 0-1 count. He's going to poke this one into the right center field gap there. That one is going to roll all the way to the warning track and eventually touch the wall. It is Hamilton over to plate. He fires it in quickly, but Hill will glide into second base safely with a one-out double. And now two batters later, it's Jonathan VR with uh, the runner on third now. And VR is just going to softly hit this one back up the middle. It makes its way into center field. That is going to drive home the runner. And now it is one-to-one. -one. Milwaukee ties it up. Next batter is Youngman, the starter. He goes down on the breaking ball. So Bailey records another strikeout. On to the top of the sixth now, though. It is Billy Hamilton at the dish. He's going to lay down a beautiful bunt here picked up right on the foul line. And Hamilton utilizes his speed there, beating it out. Now a runner on for Joey Votto. 0-2 oh, pitch. He hits one high and deep to right field, and that one is gone. An upper deck two-run homer for Joey Votto, who puts the Reds back up on top. Three to one now, as he just hooked that one very deep in the right field. Take a look at Youngman's reaction. He knew that one was gone. Did not like that pitch. Probably not a great spot on 0-2. And that would do it for him. Manager Craig Council comes out and pulls him, so Carlos Torres will take over. Now skipping ahead to the bottom of the sixth, it's Jeanette at the dish. He's going to go down. Not really a great pitch by Bailey, but a pretty bad discipline by 
by Jeanette chasing there out of the zone on the changeup that missed up. So here we go now taking a look at the six inning recap. It's still three to one top seven and it is Cabrera at the dish again working the full count and he collects his second base hit of the day. So Cabrera definitely impressing in the first time that I've been able to use him since signing him on. Uh, you know, not necessarily, I mean, it's only a one game sample and all that, but you know, just definitely a good first impression was pretty good. Um, I believe I mistakenly said he worked the full count in his last at bat. That was wrong, I believe. I think he only worked two full counts in this game and I mistakenly said he worked three, but uh, anyway, this is more poor base running on my part. So Votto drives home Cabrera with the RBI single and then I don't know why I tried to go to second there. I saw the throw was cut off, and I just wasn't really thinking. Like I said, it's kind of been a while since i played MLB games, so still kind of shaking off the rust. And if you guys have followed me for a long enough now, you know my base running is easily the worst part of my game. So now with a runner on first, it's Suarez ripping this one down the right field line. That is going to be played in the corner by the right fielder. We are going to send the runner home now, and you can see I hesitate, and I kind of screw up the base running controls, and again, uh, just bad, bad base running on my part. Bruce gets thrown out. Um, I can't even recall what happened there. I think I just messed up the controls. So, again, uh, definitely showing off the rust and definitely really not gotten any better at base running in this year's game. Ramon Flores, though, goes down. One thing I've always been good at in this game is pitching, and I continue my success in that game, or in this game, I should say, is Bailey finishes off the eighth inning there. So in his first game back, I didn't want to, you know, have him throw too many pitches, but he got through eight innings with only about 85 pitches, so I kept him in there through eight. We turn to J.J. Hoover for the ninth. He strikes out Jonathan Lucroy, as that is going to be uh, the first out of the inning, I believe. Now it is Chris Carter up a two down and Carter's going to go down on the slider. So that retires the side there. Hoover closes it out, and the Reds pick up a 4-1 victory. Hoover, actually, uh, I know I struggled with him in the first gameplay episode, but uh, he's actually had a pretty good season so far. Other than that one game, I think he's only allowed one other earned run. So he's been pitching pretty well, um, but we'll see. He's got three years of team service left. I don't know if you guys saw earlier in the episode, but I did throw a, people, a couple guys in the trade block, Homer Bailey, Jay Bruce included, uh, J.J. Hoover as well. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if we move him. I mean, relievers on bad teams are always kind of useless assets. So it would make sense to move him. But at the same time, if he plays well and, you know, he does have three years of team control left, maybe he's a piece of our bullpen long term because it's not like he's in his 30s or anything. So anyway, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching. And I'm out. Peace.